Hi, this is Ryan Gordon, and um, I think since we're all stuck in our homes this week, I thought I might try doing something interesting here and see if I can help out with everyone's boredom and maybe teach you something in the meantime. So I thought I might teach you how to make a very simple game in Dragon Ruby, so you can learn a little bit of Ruby, learn a little bit of some ideas of game development, and, you know, have some fun. Who knows? So I thought we might try and write a very quick and dirty version of Tetris, because it's, you know, not a hard project to do. Um, this expects that you know a little bit of programming. You do not have to know Ruby. If we're being completely confessional about it, I don't know much about Ruby. Uh, I'm more of a C programmer. So uh, if you happen to be someone that writes in JavaScript or you are uh, Java or any other language, really, then you might find this comforting because you can just take comfort in knowing that I'm going to be recording a video where everyone that's an expert in Ruby will be laughing at me. So this will be good for everyone. Um, okay, so if you don't have Dragon Ruby, you can just get it from dragonruby.org. That'll kick you over to our itch.io page, itch page, and you can buy it there. Um, if you don't want to buy it, you can always go to fiddle.dragonruby.org, which will uh, take our inscripted version of this and embed it right next to this cute little text editor, and you can make changes, and they'll show up over here. Uh, so you can follow along if you want, either way you like to do it. Okay, let's uh, close that for now, though. We'll get back to that later if we need to. Um, for now, I already obviously own this on itch, so I'm going to click launch on that. There we go. And hello, world. Anyone that's ever used Dragon Ruby before is used to seeing this as the first thing when you first launch. It's just a simple little game, and by game, simple I mean very simple, uh, that just says, hello world, there's our logo, and, you know, tells you to go read the readme file because there's lots of good information in there. I don't need itch anymore, so we're going to get rid of this. Boop. Now, if you're following along on your own desktop, the first thing you want to do is go figure out where itch installed this on your machine, and in there, where it installed it, there's a directory called my game. It's a good default directory, and in there is a directory called app, and that's where your source code goes, and in there is one called main, which is the first thing we expect to run. So, if you were looking, here, let's get this all set up so this window's in the right place. Boop, okay. Make my window a little bigger here. There you go. Okay. So, as you can see in, in Dragon Ruby, this text here is exactly what you're seeing over there. And as you change things in Dragon Ruby, hello, everyone. Every time you save this, Dragon Ruby will pick up on the change. And boop, there it is. It says, hello, everyone, now. Um, so you can literally hot load your game as you make changes to it. With that in mind, we'll keep Dragon Ruby running over here, and we'll keep the source code over here, and we'll go from there. Okay, so hide this window here so you can see my pretty icons on my desktop. Uh, okay, cool. So give you a little, little depth there. All right, so we're going to get started on this. First off, we don't need any of this stuff right now, so all you need to know about Ruby right now is that def and a word like tick is how you make a function. If this was C, you might say, you know, void tick something, you know, args pointer args or something. But this is not C, this is Ruby. So um, what Dragon Ruby does is it looks for this specific function, tick, and it calls it 60 times a second, relentlessly, no matter what, it will call this. I'm going to hit save, and this will vanish. Boop. Okay. Because we're not telling it to do anything. This function is empty. It just returns void and does nothing at all. Okay. But this is where all the magic happens. So when you come in here and do something like, let's see here. I need some way to start this thing off. Let's, uh, let's just keep this very simple. Put s works just like you'd expect it to. Test. And this will do nothing here because, you know, obviously there's nothing drawing to the window. But, you know, since we have this neat little console, you can see, see it says test right there. And it's just kind of saying thousands of these are coming because it's running that 60 times a second. Okay. Now you know everything you need to know about being a game developer. I'm just kidding. Okay. So what we need to do, first off, before we do anything else, is you see this thing here, args? That's the one function to tick. And everything that you get from Dragon Ruby comes through that structure. So, uh, oh, okay, let's change that. Okay, so um, where do we want to start? What's the first thing we want to do with this? Um, I guess the first thing we want to do is just, first off, the background is white, and that drives me nuts, so we're going to get rid of that. Now, the way that you draw to the screen, I don't know if you saw this before. Let me pull up Hello World again here real quick. Throw all this, puts test, da, da, da. 
Should have kept this. I'm having regrets. There we go. Okay. Now, lots of game engines expect you to do some sort of rendering thing. They, they want you to control the GPU yourself, or they want you to give it a scene or something. Dragon Ruby doesn't do that. It wants you to just give it arrays. You hand it a bunch of arrays of things that you want it to draw, and it figures out what to do. And we did that because for what we're aiming for here right now is simple 2D games. And for that, we don't really want you to worry about how to render it. We just want you to give us the thing that, if you're a programmer at all, you already understand an array, and let us figure out the problem of how to get that to your screen. So, uh, as you can see here, that comes in the args. Args is a big structure, basically. Uh, it has an element called outputs, and in there you can fill in different things, like for example, sprites, or labels, and that's how we're going to draw stuff to the screen. Or more importantly, as I'm about to show you, solids. Solids is just a rectangle of color, you know, so. Um, so let's get rid of these two things. Now, what you're looking at here, if you're not a Ruby developer, is this is a variable, basically, that we hand to you when you call this, call this function. This thing over here is a, a array declared in line. And we're just going to say 0, 0. I'll tell you what these magic numbers mean in a second. 720, 0, 0, 0. OK, now this should make the whole screen black. Let's see if I got it right. It did. Hooray. OK. You see these little, little white lines on uh, both sides, a little letterboxing for you there, because uh, Dragon Ruby will scale your window to fit. But as far as your program is concerned, it's always 1280 by 720. And anything else, it'll just kind of letterbox it to make it work, and it'll scale so it fits your window nicely. So if I make this a little more aspect ratio correct, boop, they get mostly black there. Okay, good. But, uh, but as far as your program is concerned, you do not have to worry about what dimensions it's running at, or if they're on a 4K monitor, or like an old ancient like 640 by 480 monitor. As far as you're concerned, it's always this many pixels, and we will deal with the difference between that and what reality actually is. Um, so now we have this thing is all black because we've told it to draw exactly one thing. The outputs array tells it what to draw. And we said draw one big black rectangle that covers the entire screen, because that's more what we're looking for there. Okay, so now let's start building a game. Um, let's see here. So I guess the first thing we're going to want to do is draw... Uh, I don't know, what should we do first? I guess what we're going to need first before we do anything else... Def, def is how you say we're going to do a new function. Init args and we're going to call that init args. You can put parentheses around these if you're more of a C programmer. It understands it's a function. Sometimes you need them, sometimes you don't. OK. So now every time it, it runs, uh, put that at the start. Makes sense, right? Every time it calls this tick function, which uh, Dragon Ruby will do 60 times a second at 60 hertz. So you know if you, you so your game is running, let's say, at 60 FPS all the time. It's going to call this function every time through, and that's going to set this up, which says draw the screen black. So in here, let's go ahead and get my tab spaces right here. OK, uh, let's set up some things that you think you might need for Tetris. Like, what would be some variables that you would need to get uh, Tetris to do the right thing? I mean, if you're going to have to have a score, right? Uh, score equals 0, you want to set that. Now, first things first. This is a local variable. That's how Ruby works. So we can't just do that because we'd just be setting the score to zero in this function, and poof, that would go away. So we have to hang that somewhere. So we're going to put this in args state, just a place we have here just says we will hold on to this information every time this tick function runs. So you can store stuff here, and it will be waiting for you when you come back. So arg state score zero. Um, but if we were to do this, every time this function runs 60 times per second, we, our score would be zero again. So we're going to do this magic, which is kind of a fun Ruby thing. Put those two pipe symbols right before that. Arg score equals zero. Uh, pipe pipe equals zero. And that basically says, if this variable has not been set, set it to zero. So that it definitely knows this thing exists now, but it will not reset it 60 times per second once we've set it to something. So that makes that a useful little operator for initialization stuff. Um, let's see, what else might we need? We're going to need to know arc state game over. We're going to need to know if the game 
has ended. So we know if we should keep dropping bricks. What else will we need to know? Uh, we're going to need to know how big the game grid is. Grid width, we'll call that. Uh, equals... How big is a Tetris board, anyway? Let's see if we find an image or something here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, so a Tetris board, at least according to this particular screenshot, is 10 by 20. Okay, so we'll make the grid, the width of the grid, 10. We'll make the height, 20. Okay, now saving that, but this isn't doing anything yet. Um, what else might we need to know? I guess we're going to need to know what our current piece is. State current piece. We'll need to know its position. Zero. I guess we'll, we'll make that five because that would be the middle of ten, right? And Y, we'll start that at zero. Cool. Okay. Now that we're done, we've made Tetris. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So now after we've done that, we're going to need to start doing something with this information. Well, I guess we're going to need a grid, too. Let's, let's build that in here real quick. All right, so I guess if arg state grid nil. So if you're a C programmer or lots of other languages, they might say null. Ruby says nil. And you might see this function. This is a function here. That question mark in this case is kind of a standard Ruby thing where we're saying basically this function isn't just called nil, it's called nil question mark. And they're saying return true or false if this thing I've just asked for is nil, if we haven't said it before. And we haven't. So uh, so the first time through, if this is nil, let's build it. We want to say arg state grid equals um, yeah, okay, so let's do this. Just That just simply says make a blank array. And then we're going to do a quick for loop to fill this in and make it what we want it to be. For x in 0 to grid arg state grid width do. OK, if you're, a Ruby per if you're not a Ruby person, this is a for loop. It's going from 0 to the width of this. We're going to do width minus 1 because unlike C, where you do a less than, it does more like less than equals, you know. Okay, so we got this. Now we're going to, inside of here, we're going to do for y in 0 to arg state grid height minus 1, do. Okay, so in here, uh, we're going to do arg state grid x equals Okay, so we're going to, every every pass through here, we're going to make a new array so that we end up with an array of an array, right? And then in this next one, we're going to set this x and y to 0, just so we have an array. Now, if you're not a Ruby person, you'll notice I'm putting semicolons on the end of these lines. They're not required, but you can if you want to. Um, you can use it if you want to put multiple statements on one line. You can, but... Go like that. Okay, so now we've got a big old honking array here, a two uh, two dimensional array, uh, where you know all of it's filled with zeros. So if it looks something like that, whatever, and do twenty of those or ten of those, but uh, that that's your array. Each one of these is going to be your grid. That's what the game grid is going to look like as you're dropping blocks through it, and these numbers will become non-zero once a block is in that in specific position in that grid. Um, and you can, now that we've set this up, arg state grid, you know, x and y, like that. If you want the, uh, the ones in index 3, and because these start at 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 0, 1, 2. So that would be that guy right there. That's how you can refer to him to find out. So that's good to have that set up. That's half the state of Tetris right there. Um, 
What else do we need? That's probably a good start for now. We're going to need to know what pieces in play and stuff like that. But that gives us enough that we have a grid with nothing in it. And, you know, some other stuff we're going to need. And we'll add more to that as we go along. Now, let's draw something. Okay, so we have that set up. That'll only set these variables in this init function the first time through it. We make the background black. That's good. Now, I guess let's tell it to render some stuff. Okay. Let's make a function that renders. Def render args. All right, we need a couple of things here. Let's see. What do we need? Well, let's just, I guess we're going to need the grid itself. Let's draw that. Now, sometimes it's useful just to say what we're going to do before we implement it all. We can be like, okay, to make this whole game, we're going to have to render this grid. Maybe render the score. Render, um, I don't know, the background. You know. Whatever like that, even though we're not going to implement these yet. So we'll go with what's easy and visible first. So we'll do render grid, and we'll leave those other things as aspirational for the future, for the time being. And OK, so I'm going to save this, see if it crashes. Hey, I got it right so far. Now this, again, all this thing is doing is it's making sure all our stuff's initialized, making the background sol uh, solid black, and then calling render, which is doing basically nothing. Let's move this up here. There you go. Render background. I mean, you know, this makes some sense. Def render background. Okay. Right where we were. Oops, there's a crash. Okay, this is always worth doing. So when you crash in Dragon Ruby because you had some syntax error or whatnot like that, it will pop up a console like this, like standard Quake looking console, so you can find out what your uh, problem was here. Dun, 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 dun. Sometimes it's more helpful than others. Hard to say. Okay. Anyway, I know what's wrong here is the problem we went. Uh, render background. I forgot to give it args. Because this needs to know how to get to that. So I'm going to save it. And whoop, it goes away. Okay, we're back to there. All right. Let's render a grid and see what's going on here. This is the hardest part of the whole thing. Okay, let me think for a moment about this. We're going to... Um, well, I guess the first thing we want to do here is we want to get out of the habit of thinking about pixels. So let's solve that right now. Render cube. Okay. So we're not going to actually render like a 3D cube. But, you know, in Tetris, you think of these things as, you know, you know cubes falling down, right? So... Let's uh, try to do that real quick. We'll call it that. And so what we want to know is where this cube is going to be. We're going to say x and y. And yeah, let's do that. OK, so no, um, we're saying x and y, but we're going to just make a note to ourselves. x and y are positions can't spell positions in the grid not pixels okay just so we know for later because we don't want to have to do all the math that we're about to do here to tap dance around the screen we're going to want to try and just be keep this simple and say when i talk about this position on the game grid that's what i want you to do instead and render cube is going to hide all the complexity of that all right let's see here we got okay in fact let's just do that Render cube. Um, so we're going to want to do uh, args. Oh, we're going to need args again. Always need args. Args outputs. We're just we're going to keep this simple for now. Now, as you can see, there's where'd you go? On on these, you can tell there's a little bit more texture on these, and that they have like a nice little outline on the cubes and we'll get to that in a moment but you know if you want to get fancy you can do sprites so these things are sparkly and stuff but we're just gonna keep this simple for now just so we can get the logic in place we're just gonna call these just simple solid boxes that's all we want to do for now so um, again when you do these when you do uh, when you draw something like this we hand it an array that's an array built in line and this little squiggly thing here 
uh, normally means shift left, but in this case, since solids is an array, it means pack it onto the end of the array. So uh, it's more of an unshift operation, if you will. Okay, so let's go ahead and get these on here. We need to know a couple of things here. We need to know where the grid starts at. Okay, so for now, we don't have any strong opinions about this, so we're going to call it grid x equals 0. This is just a local variable. We're going to pick a better number for this in a moment, but just to have it, we're just going to say in the corner of the screen. Okay. Now, this is probably a good time to tell you something about this. If you've ever done game development before, we tend to think of 0, 0 as being this upper left-hand corner right here. But that's not how it is in Dragon Ruby. We did it a different way. We did it the more mathematical way. If, you're like, if you liked your geometry class, then you might be into this. Uh, the lower left-hand corner is where 0, 0 is, and it goes up and to the right with positive numbers. And we did that because that's useful for certain things. The, the original way this, we decided on this is that if you're making Super Mario and you want Mario to jump, it seems really silly to make his position subtract. So we wanted him to go up and to the right as you add numbers, um, as you add to his position. So that's ultimately why we changed it to be like that. But, okay, so with that in mind, and since you always have a 1280 by 720 display, no matter what, we're going to take this number because we want to render from the top down on this. So we're going to say, um, okay, so we want to render this at, you know, whatever grid x, which is 0 in this case, but we're going to change that later. Uh, the numbers we're filling in here are x, y, with height, basically. So, okay x, y, let's see, what do we want to do? Okay, so we want x times, okay, x is our base thing, but we're also going to say where the x passed into this is, times uh, box size, I guess. What is this? Um, I don't know, let's try, I don't know, a box size of, I'm just going to spitball this and say, we'll call it 30, why not? Box size equals 30, just so we know. So what we're doing is we're saying, from the starting x position of the grid, you can go from there and then go, you know, however many cubes over, how many boxes over we are. And then we want to do the same thing. Grid y for the y, well, the y coordinate. Uh, grid y. But there's, like I said, remember these numbers go, down, uh, go up instead of down. But for the grid, I think it's going to be more useful to us if it goes the other way. So we're going to flip this by saying 720 minus grid y, and then subtract from that, same thing as before, y times box size. Because it's a cube, the same size on both sides of it. Uh, and for now, we'll just call it red, 255, zero, zero. If you've never done this before, Two five five. That these are red, blue, green, and alpha. Uh, so two fifty five is the biggest number. That's full red, no green, no blue, not transparent at all. You'll get used to those magic numbers eventually, but for now, let's just do that. So that should be every time we call render cube with a position, it should. If I didn't screw this up, which is totally possible, should draw a box at that part in the grid, which should be in the corner for now. So. Um, so let's try that real quick before we do anything else. Let's just say in here, render grid's not going to do a grid yet because we haven't written this code, but we can say render cube uh, args. Whoops, render grid's going to need args too. Args. I need here too. We're going to fix that in a moment because that's already annoying me. Let's put one at x and y equals 2 and just see if this crashes on me. Well, it didn't crash, but it didn't do anything. Let's see. What did I screw up here? Box size, grid X, grid Y. Oh, I forgot to put the height. Ah, okay, box size, box size, because again, it's that. So, okay, now let's try it. Okay, there's a cube. Now we're doing something. Okay, and let's just keep your eye over here on this little red thing. I'm going to change this from 2, 2 to, I'm going to put a Another one at 4, 4, and it should come up on a little diagonal next to it. Yes, okay, now we're getting somewhere. And let's, why not? Let's put 3, 3 in there, too. Just 
All right, we're officially game developers. We can draw stuff on the screen at command. Okay, good. We're making progress already. I love it. Let's um, try to figure out how to draw a grid then, based on this. So, let's see here. How can we do this? Okay, so we can render a cube. Checking my notes here. Sorry for the pause while I figure out what I'm doing. Okay, so let's. Okay, I got you. Okay, let's. Uh, where am I grid at? There we go. Okay, let's render this green game grid. We already know roughly how it is because we already did a whole bunch down here of iterating through this. So let's just do this very quickly. Render grid. Same deal as before. Four. Well, let's do this backwards just because it's easier for needs right now. I guess. I guess it doesn't really matter. Okay, let's do for x in zero to arg state grid height grid height do I'm in the habit of trying to pair these things up right now. Like I like to have the for and the end written before I write the thing in the middle. Otherwise, I tend to forget to put my ending brace in there. So, so okay. So we're just going to iterate through. This should be grid and it's minus one because we don't want to go past the end of the ray. Like that. Okay, so blah, blah, blah. And then we should just theoretically be able to render the cube from that. So we should say render cube x and y. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Render. Uh -huh. Sorry. Shouldn't have started this at 1 in the morning. That was a fatal mistake. X and Y. Oh, and args. We need that, too. We're going to fix that in a moment. Now, theoretically, this should fill in the whole grid right now. It pretty much did. Except I did these backwards, because that should have been width, height. There's your whole grid. Okay. That's looking better already, except it's bright red, and it's the whole thing filled in. But we know we can fill in those cubes now, and it works. So there's a couple of things we want to fix here. First off, this is an atrocious number. We're going to need to pick a better, better option than zero. Um, so let's do, let's try to center this thing. So 1280 is the width of the screen, no matter what it actually is in reality, minus the grid width times box size. So grid width times box size would be the entire pixel size of the grid, because it would be each cube times the size, uh, the number of cubes times the size of each cube. Uh, so you take the size of the screen minus the, th the thing you want to render and divide by two, and that should put it directly in the middle of the screen. Unless I crash. Did I crash for a reason? Let me see. Grid X. I should have done it. Did I type that wrong? Oh, yes. Hmm. Okay. Let's do this again args state it's complaining because those yeah undefined method grid w yeah there it is okay and box size is there so we'll move that up here so this should move to the center of the screen boop there it is okay so we can do the same thing for grid y except this thing all right let's see if this works why not okay so 720 because it's 12 by 720 720p no matter what you do Minus arg state grid height times box size divide by two, and hopefully that'll center vertically now. Close enough, not quite. And the reason that didn't quite do it is because when we render, we're saying render at y, and then you have the whole width, the whole height going there, but it starts at the bottom left corner which is a little bit confusing if you're used to it starting in the top right. So we're going to say 720, let's, da, 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 let's just make it minus 2 and see if that looks better. There you go, that looks pretty centered. Okay, good. Now, I'm already tired of passing args to everything. Um, that's kind of counterproductive here. So what I think we're going to do is this. Oops. I'm going to wrap this whole thing in a quick class. Tetris game. Say class Tetris game, and I'm gonna move everything over a little bit because that's just how I roll. 
Although if you really don't care that much, we're not really getting crazy object oriented here. You could just write class up there and leave it be. But this gives me a chance to go through here real quick before we get out of control. Now all of these things Okay, a couple of things are different. First off, when you have a class in Ruby, initialize is the name of your constructor function for it. So we change this from init to initialize, and args is still, we're still going to pass that in here. But when you initialize stuff in here, you no longer have to type arg state because you have instance variables, which means that you don't have to type this whole thing out. You can just put an at for the things you care about. So we're going to do this real quick. We're going to just do a quick search and replace. Arg state blah. We're going to change that to an at. There you go. You see, as we're already the code shrinking down, which is super nice. Oops. Okay. So that was that. So no more of that. Let's get rid of. Let's put args in here so we have access to it when we need it. Args. Okay. Uh, we do not need to have these things be pipe pipe equal anymore because initialize is only called once when you first construct the thing. This can just oops, this can just be an equal sign now. Equal make that equal like that. There we go. Alright, and those will all be there. Grid will always be nil here, so we don't have to check for that. Things are getting simpler already. Okay. People are probably saying, oh my gosh, what is this text editor? Why can't I just auto indent that stuff for you. I know, things are terrible. Okay, so now we can get rid of args on all these things. Args. Because none of these things need to pass args around anymore once we do this. Except that one we're going to keep. Okay, don't hit on there. This one needs to stay because that is the actual args thing. That can go, that can go. Okay, so now that'll crash because I have some more things I need to set up here. Init args is gone because now we're going to do this. Args, the only thing we need to save on oops, on args.state is this game itself. Game. Now we're still going to do a pipe pipe equal because we only want to do this on the first time. Tetris game dot new, which is how you do it. It's, it's like the operator new in C++. That's how you create a new object. And we're going to pass it args. Okay, now the first time this runs, it'll construct the game object and save it there for later. And then we can just come in here and say arc state games tick. There we go. Game tick. Yeah, okay, I think that's right. Cool. And now we can just sit here inside the class and say tick. And all right, now this is all the. Dragon Ruby cares about is this function, and then the rest can all happen inside your class, but we don't have to keep passing around args.state dot every game variable ever. So it makes it a little cleaner. You don't have to mess around with it. Theoretically we should syntax error on line twenty. What did I type in wrong here? Oh comma there. My bad. There you go. Okay, so now our tick now we're back to a white screen because this is calling tick in our class, which is empty, so let's go and back and render. And now, there you go, there's our grid again. Okay, cool. Now we can actually get down to business here. All right, first off, we don't want to render a cube if it's zero. If uh, grid x, y does not equal zero. So this should now blank out, boop. But, you know, if we wanted to come in here and go at grid at, uh, 2, 2 equals 1. There you go. As we start lighting up various things in the grid, let's put this at like 15, 7. Oh, whoops. That was, oh, sorry, there's only 7, 15, x and y. So, there you go. As you can see, as we, yeah, here, let's move to 14. As we make changes, Oh, so there's an interesting thing. See how it's still, uh, as I made a change here, I changed from 15 to 14. Let's make it 13. See how these are just staying in here? They're not getting rid of the old ones, because grid does not reset every time I save the file. So I'm going to stick one of these right at the top. G 
TTK reset. See that right there? When it reloads this file because I've made changes to it, it'll rerun any code that's not in a function. And GTK resets a magic piece of code that will say, take all the state and wipe it out. So while you're developing something, that's a useful thing to have there and you want to take it out later. But save it, boop, there. Now the grid gets nuked every time you save the file so you can start from scratch and go to 15. There, now it's moving around. Okay, cool. So now we have a grid that as we set things in, they will pop up on the screen inside the game grid. So that's good, we're making progress already. Let's see, what do we need to do now? Now we need to, uh, let me see, we've got a background, we got a grid. I guess it's just since we can render stuff here. Let's put a border around this thing, just you know, while we're here. Uh, okay, so let's see, in the background, let's render grid border. Why not? Just so we know where, you know, where things stand here. F render grid border. All right, let's see here. Now, let me figure this out real quick. I guess we're going to have to have an X, which would be... Okay, so we want the border to be a round thing, and we want its width to be bigger than the thing, so we're going to say at grid width plus two, so that we're starting one bit before where the grid would be, uh, like one square before where the grid would be, and then we go one square past it, so you would need it to be two squares bigger than the actual grid, and starting one before it on each thing, so I guess height would be the same, right? Yeah, I guess. It makes sense, right? Two. Yeah, okay, I think that's right. Okay, so this won't do anything because there are just a couple local variables being set. Let's change that. All right, so for i in, let's see, we want to go from the x position where we start to x plus width minus 1 because it doesn't work like c. Do, and all right. So in here, we just want to render cube, not the whole grid, render cube, and we want to do that at the x position, and then it's going across the top in this as we iterate across here. So we want to, each time through, it'll do the next one to the right of the previous one. So these we want these all to be at the same vertical level, so we'll just say y for that. And then while we're in here, we might as well do the bottom of it also, which would be, uh, go across the same one, it would be I guess y plus height, would that be right? Yeah, y plus height. Y plus height minus one. Mm, no, wait. Let's just try y plus height and see what happens. All right, there we have orders. Oh yeah, that is off by one. Why is that? Let's see, y plus one. There we go, okay, that looks good. And then let's do the same, but let's do it down the sides. So that would be same deal, except instead of uh, instead of x and width, we'll do y and height, minus 1. Now from here, we're going to want these to always be at the same vertical space. So we're going to do x for each of these, but then this has to iterate by 1. And this is going to have to be x plus width minus 1. Yeah, OK, sure, I guess that makes sense. I. Okay, let's see if that works. No, we need an I here too. Okay, so let's see. This should just theoretically loop through there and give us vertical boxes. Let's see. Hey, we have a grid now. We have a thing around our grid now. Cool. Let's take off our if to make sure this fills in the grid. So let's, not, let's draw them whether they're filled or whether it's zero or not. There you go. Solid box. Beautiful. Okay. Now the problem is you can see with solid box, you don't actually know the difference between the border and the actual thing, so let's put some color in these, right? Let's see here. Render cube. RGB. A equals 255. Um, default parameters on uh, in Ruby, you can just say equals whatever, and if you don't specify it in your function, when you call this, it'll just assume you meant 255. So, uh, and I had these filled in, so let's just make it 
RG, RGBA, there we go. Now let's go find everywhere we called render cube. Just, here we go, X, Y, and we'll make the game pieces. We'll, we'll just leave those as red for now. And then let's find the other one was these down here and we'll call those color equals, let's make those white for now. Now when you have an array and you just want to splat it out so it becomes a bunch of, uh, if you have an array of this thing and you want to splat it out so uh, you don't have to write the whole thing out or say color zero, color one, color two, you can just simply put a star before it and say color, and it will Ruby will graciously splat that out for you. So let's fill in all those render cubes with that. Now theoretically, boop, if I did that right, which apparently I did not, render grid border, did I do that wrong? Oh no, the, I made those red, that was not what I meant to do. Let's make those white, so 255, 255, 255. Full intensity on red, blue, and green will make things white, there it is. And we left the grid red, so let's take that if off, just to make sure these rendered in the right place. And there you go. Okay, we're making progress. This is like half a Tetris right here. Okay, that's good. So let's leave that for now as good enough. Okay, so now we're gonna need a piece to fall in there, right? Let's see, what can we do now? Because um, we can draw the things, we need to have a thing going in there. How do we decide what our pieces should be? Okay, well let's keep this simple for now and just uh, let's have let's add a, a variable that we can use for this. We'll call it just oh we already had this current piece x and y. So okay, now we need to know what the current piece is. Now this is going to be an array of items of where what the shape of this thing is so now if we were to take this thing let's just take the very simple box like you know the um here let's do this tetris pieces let's see what these things look like oh there they are okay so let's just take this yellow box right here the one that's just two by two so what we're going to want is an array that has four pieces in it, a two-dimensional array that has piece one, piece two, piece three, and piece four, all lit up. Or piece. So we're just gonna simply do something like this. If it has a one, it's set. If it has a zero, it's not a part of the piece, which you'll need when you get into the things that have irregular shapes. But since this thing, all four pieces of it, are filled in, we'll just call it that for now, and we'll deal with what to do with that later. Okay, so the current piece, we have one now, and we know where it should be, X and Y. So let's come in here, and we gotta render the current piece. Render grid, render, oh my goodness, render current piece. Alright, so now what we would have to do for that is say, let me think for a moment. So I guess we have a grid, and we're going to have to figure out what to do with that thing. I'm just thinking through this real quick, I'm sorry, it's dead air, dead air, I'm sorry about that. Um, Okay, so let me think this one through. Okay, so if we have we have an array with the current piece, so we're going to say we're going to need to know where we are in each one, so we'll say uh, that equals current piece x, because this is a local, because we're going to iterate with this in a moment. Current piece y, okay. And then we're just going to draw this thing exactly where it is. So we're going to say for I in, I guess, current piece. Yeah, 
yeah, okay, let's do this current piece do. Now, since I'm, I'm giving this an array, current piece is an array. It's an array of arrays, actually. You can, instead of giving it numbers, you can iterate through it like this, uh, and it'll just give you the next item each time through the for loop. And then let's do this to 4j in current piece i. Uh, variable naming conventions are terrible in every language. You can take it with you wherever you go. All right, render piece. So, okay, so we have these, and on each thing through here, we're going to say dun dun dun. Okay. So I'll go all the way across X and then all the way across Y. Okay, and we need to know where the current piece on this is. Let me think. Um, okay, so we don't actually, well, okay, that would be the grid. And I guess we could just do this. Okay, so as we come through here, we're gonna go render cube at, let's see, i is our x, that's kind of badly named. Let's rename these so they're not stupid. x, y. Oh, except that's gonna give you the thing that's in it. Okay, yeah, okay, change of plans, hang on, sorry. All right, let's do it like this then, because, you know, can't think through this at two in the morning. Current piece x, and then y position, get my dragon ruby back up here, y position equals current piece y, and then we'll do it like this, for x in 0 to, we'll do it like a regular numerical for loop, current piece length minus 1. Length is a built-in thing on all Ruby arrays. It tells you how big the array is. So for y in 0 to current piece x length minus 1. Now, because remember, these might be, this this one happens to be because this it's this, the Q piece. It's a 2 by 2 array, but not all of these will have regular things. For example, if you look over here, you know, this, uh, this the, the, the long straight piece is, a one by four array, and this one's a two by three array, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, so these can change. That's why we're checking the, the length of these before we iterate into them. So now, when we come through here, we're going to say render cube x and y because we know those are the coordinates. Now, as we iterate through these numerically, x and y. What was the other thing? It was the color of the thing. Okay, so let's do this. Is just x y red full red, and then we'll stick an if on this. Unlike C and Ruby, you can stick an if on the end of something. Render cube x, y, if this condition is true. Otherwise, ignore this line. Don't run this line, uh, which is nice for like natural language. The way we actually think, you can say it out loud that way, and it'll. you can also code it that way in Ruby, which is kind of nice. Um, C has taught us to do it backwards. We say if, then, and that only works for that if you give a mouse a cookie book. Um, okay, render cube if current piece x, y does not equal zero, which in, in this case is cube, every item of this will not be zero. Um, and it should do it at the right place. Oh, nope, nope, that's a lie. Oh no, that's, that's, okay, yeah, we don't need these, because we can just say x being the current iterator, but also you want a base position, which is the current piece's starting point. So we'll add to that, and then current piece. y plus y. Okay, so that big gobbledygook, let's see how we did here. Now save this, see if it crashes. Oh, we don't need x position and y position. We'll get rid of those. There you go. We have a cube. Now, just since we're here, I'm just going to change the cube's position. It's current piece y plus equals, no, let's just do equals 5 instead of 0. It's a 0, so it's at the top of the grid right now. Boop, there it goes, it moves. Okay, so now we have a piece that we can move around. Progress, progress already. Okay, so I guess the next thing we need to do is make this thing drop, right? All right, let's figure that out real fast here. Um, we're going to, before we draw, let's add a function called iterate. And this is where all your game logic is going to happen. We'll fill this in with various things. So 
The first thing you need to know is that this function tick and everything under it runs 60 times a second no matter what. One of the things that we want to do with Dragon Ruby is make sure you didn't have to worry about delta time. It always happens 60 times a second, which means that you don't have to worry about was this frame faster than the one before it? Do I have to measure the difference between them? It's always a 60th of a second, and we take great pains to help make that happen. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to take a drink of my coffee real quick. All right, um, so what we want to do is, like Tetris, these pieces should be dropping as time goes on relentlessly. So we are going to need to get this thing to drop over time. So we're going to add an instance variable here up at the top and call this thing next move. And we're going to call it, it runs 60 times a second, so we're going to call it 30 for half a second. Every half a second, we want this piece to drop another level in the grid. So what we'll do is every time through here, next move minus equals one. So every time through here, it subtracts one from this next move variable. And then we're going to say if, whoops, oops, if next move less than or equal, it's always good to be safe, but this should theoretically always go to zero, right? Um, if it gets there, drop the piece. So let's see here. At that point, we want to say uh, current piece y minus equals one. Now, unlike C, there is no minus minus operator in Ruby. So you say minus equals one. That's close enough, you know. So theoretically, and then let's reset next move back to 30. Next move equals 30. So once this hits zero, which it'll do after it's run, this function's run 30 times, which since we're running at 60 times a second, every half second, this code right in here will run. We'll drop the, oh, I'm sorry, that should be plus one. The, the piece of the grid that we're working on will go, uh, uh, the, the current piece will drop down one level in the grid and we'll reset this counter so that it takes another half second before it drops again. I'm gonna hit save and see if it works. There it goes. All right, we have animation. It's like a real video game now. Now, we can't control this anything. In fact, it's gonna drop right through the grid here in a moment. Bye. Avenge my death. Okay, it's gone. Now, since we have that GTK reset at the top, every time I save this, it'll restart again at the top. But this is progress, this is good. Um, okay, so I guess the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is deal with that thing hitting the ground, right? All right, so we should figure that part out now. So let me think for a moment here. I guess we need to know if it collides, so let's try and let's decide if it's colliding here. All right, so if we drop it, we don't need to know if it's colliding until we're actually ready to move the thing down, so let's, uh, after we've moved it, let's uh, see if current piece colliding, we'll call that. Do something. Figure that out. Let's see, now that just crashed because we don't have anything called current piece colliding yet. Current piece colliding. Okay, take a drink of coffee real quick and think about this. All right, we need to figure out if this is touching anything in the grid, right? So, having moved down it, we need to know if it's going to now be touching thing. Is that right? That sounds right. Okay. Um, okay, so what we need to do since, now th again, this is easy when you have a 2 by 2 cube, but this becomes more complicated with other pieces so uh, that are not regular like that. So we're going to have to check each piece of the, the Tetris piece that's dropping at the moment to decide if it's touching something. So, let's see here. Okay, um, so we just need a for loop. We've already written this before. Let's go find that again. There you go. P 
He's colliding. Okay. Boop. There we go. All right, we got our current piece. We don't want to render something, though. That would be silly. So let's get rid of that for a second. Now, in here, we want to make sure a couple of things. Okay, so right now, let's just make sure if it's at the bottom of the grid that it stops moving, right? So um, if current piece x... Y. Actually, we don't even need. Well, yeah, okay, sure. So if current piece x y does not equal zero, because you, it, there has to be an actual piece in there. And and works just like C, ampersand ampersand, and other languages too, of course. So. Okay, so if that actually doesn't have anything there, I'm going to say and y. Oh, okay, that would need to be. Here, let's move this out to a variable just so we have it. Well, no, okay, let's just do it right here. We can clean it up later. Current piece y plus y, which is going to be 0 to whatever the height of this thing is. If that plus y is greater than or equal to grid height. It's that plus that, it's greater than grid height. Okay, I think that should be right. And then return true. Return true. Otherwise, if we get all the way through this and none of those were hitting the bottom of the grid, then we return false. And that is that. I think you can be fancy in Ruby and just say false and they don't know you mean return, but we're going to do that because I'm a C programmer. All right, now this won't do anything yet except tell me if it's going to crash. Okay, so <clears throat> for the sake of speeding this up, we're going to subtract 10 from our counter every time so you don't have to wait for it to slow down like this. will go, I don't know, three times faster, I'll say. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so <clears throat> if current piece colliding, let's see if that actually collided. Let's do something here to make it definitely crash. Boom. Okay, good. It's definitely working. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Although I think we should probably do that before we move it down so we're not waiting we're not waiting an extra thing here. Okay, so current piece colliding. Boom. Okay. Collided so hard it crashed the game. Okay, so now that we have that, what we're gonna want to do is plant this piece. Call it plant current piece so that we can get another one. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Def plant current piece. Now, this is where it gets a little hairy because we are going to want to come through here and fill in these pieces into the grid. So, this, this piece that's floating in free in space is going to become part of the grid now. Plant current piece. Okay, so we're going to go. Just when I'm wondering what plant means later, we're going to say make this part of the landscape. Sure, why not? That's why I called it that. Okay, so let's get fancy here. Again, we're going to just loop over this thing here. Do it like this. Copy it from another thing, because why not? It's like Stack Overflow in real time. Uh, okay, so now we're in here, so now what we want to do is for each piece of this, we want to say grid current piece x plus x current piece y plus y, if I got my math right on this, I'm going to find out, equals Oops, current piece x, y. So whatever the, um, and so we're not, it should be okay because theoretically there should never be a piece of the grid that we're overwriting with blank, but just in case we'll put an if on the end of this. If, uh, if this bothers you to have these at the end, you can, it's also totally cool to go if at the top like, like this and say if 
current piece x, y does not equal zero, that, and, and this can go because that was from the other loop. Okay. So theoretically, once this is here, when we plant this piece, it becomes part of the it becomes part of the game grid, so it'll stay there. The that part of the grid will be filled in. So we're going to do that, and then we'll just say if if we're planning this thing, let's go ahead and set current piece y back to zero. So another so the moving piece will be back at the uh, top of the screen. All right, let's save this and see what happens. Okay, boop, boop, boop. Okay, it's not quite working right, but you can see it's planting something there, and we can't move this yet, so it's just dropping in the same place. But so y is zero, but it definitely left something there. Uh, let me see here. Did I write this in the wrong place? I could have written this in the wrong place. That should have been right. Let me see. Clearly, I did not plant that in the right place, or... Oh! Okay, wait. I can see this is dropping by one before we moved it, so... If it's not colliding, so let's make this L. So we don't want to move it down here if we were planning it anyway, so current piece Y. So I should at least fix that part. Okay, I fixed that, and then... Current piece... Da -da 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 -da. Y does not equal zero, then should have done that. Current piece is colliding. If X, I feel like I broke this when I moved it. Just for my own amusement, I should probably change that. But and current piece Y. Should be grid minus one, maybe. I don't know, let me see. Oh, I guess. Okay. Except that didn't work there because it should have stacked on that. Oh, <laughs> it's not working because we are checking to see if we're hitting the bottom of the grid. But we did not check to see if we're hitting anything else in the grid. So let's do that really quick. All right, let me see here. Current piece colliding, let me think. Okay, so we should just have to be able to check. Turn true. It doesn't equal zero. Here, let's do it like this. We only care about if it's that, so I'm getting kind of the stairway of doom here, but that's okay. If current piece y plus y is greater than the grid, return true. We could also do else if there's no e in else in the middle of else if. Some languages are like that. I don't know why. I guess it's less letters to type. So we want to say if current piece y is oh and then okay so we want to say if current piece y try and get the math right on this if grid current piece x plus x current piece y plus y does not equal zero to say there's something already in the grid then we say it's also colliding so let's see if this will work save bump 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 my math's off by one but you can see it's now stacking so we're making progress piece y plus why is that off by one shouldn't be all right, I'm going to humor it for one moment and just save that. One. I feel like that's incorrect, but we're going to go with it for now. Minus one. Let's see if that'll work any better. Done. Oop, nope, hung up there. Math is hard. All right. This is probably a good time to take a break on this and come back and do some more of this in a little bit check my math without having you have to sit here and listen to me mumble to myself. Yeah, somewhere we're off by one. I guess I'll have to figure that one out real quick. It's pretty, though. We're making progress. It's fun. Okay, cool. All right, we'll be back in a little bit.